Welcome, friends, to the Unit Circle, the final stop on our voyage through T1. Okay, the Unit Circle. What is this? A Unit Circle, or I'll write that in, the Unit Circle is a circle with a radius of 1 centered at the origin. Let's zoom in on it. There it is. This circle has a hypotenuse, it has a radius of 1 and therefore the hypotenuse of any triangle drawn within it is 1. For any angle theta, there is a point P theta. That's the name of the point. So it depends on theta. And this point has an x and a y value, like any other point. The x value happens to be this side of the right triangle, and the y value happens to be this side of the right triangle. So in fact, we could say, using Pythagoras, that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. This, my friends, is the formula for the unit circle. Every point on the unit circle satisfies this equation. Let's zoom out. Now what else could we conclude? Well, any point on the unit circle, p theta x y, can be found using trig ratios. Since the radius is one unit, then x would be exactly equal to the cosine of theta and y would be equal to the sine of theta. Let's see why that is. Moving back up, we can look at this triangle here with an x value, a y value, and a hypotenuse of 1 and an angle theta. Well, what is the sine of theta? That's the opposite. Y divided by the hypotenuse 1, which is Y. What's the cosine of theta? That's the adjacent X divided by the hypotenuse 1, and that's X as well. Oh my goodness. So for every point on the unit circle, we can conclude that that point is exactly equal to the cosine of the angle and the sine of the angle. So, let's look at this example. Determine the coordinates of a terminal point on the unit circle for the following angle, theta equals 240. Well, that point on the unit circle is the point P of 240, which is going to be the cos of 240, and the sine of 240. Well, what are those values? Well, these are exact values that we've seen before. The cos of 240, hmm, got to go back to my memory here. I believe that is negative 1 half. And the sine of 240, again, going on memory, is negative root 3 over 2. I could remember that 240 is in the 60 degree family, or I could look it up, but I've chosen to memorize a lot of these values. Now here's the unit circle. Imagine we zoomed in on this unit circle and we looked at all the x and y values for each of these angles. Well, let's draw one of the values in particular. We're going to look at the angle that's 30 degrees. the values of the x and y coordinates here are the cosine of 30 degrees and the sine of 30 degrees. The cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2 and the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half as we've seen in a previous section. Maybe things will start making sense if we think of all the angles in the 30 degree family. This is an angle in the 30 degree family. The actual value of the angle is 150 degrees. And what's the cosine and the sine value? 
Well, look at the x and y values here. This triangle and the triangle in quadrant 1 are identical. They, all have, they both have a, a hypotenuse of 1, and they would have the same x and y values, except that the x, well, it's negative, because we're over to the left. So in fact, the cosine is negative 3 over 2, and the sine is positive 1 half. Looking into the third quadrant, we again have an angle with a reference of 30 degrees. What is this angle? you may ask. It's this long angle here. That's the angle hmm, uh, 180 plus 30. That's 210. Maybe I'll write it like this. This is the point at the angle 210. And what are the coordinates of this point? Well, the x value is negative and the y value is now also negative. But the absolute value of the x and y remains the same. And finally, similarly, we could draw an angle in the fourth quadrant, again with a reference of 30 degrees. What would the coordinates of this point be? Well, the x value is now positive again, and the y value is negative but the absolute value of each of these is the same. Where is this point, you may ask? Well, this is the point at the angle 330 degrees, right? With a reference of 30 away from the 360. Okay. Well, there's a little rule that we can write out here on the bottom of the page that will help us think about all of this. It's called the cast rule. It simply is written like this. C a S T. What does it say? It's saying that in this quadrant, where I wrote a C, the X values are positive, and so the cosine, C for cosine, is positive. That's saying that the cosine is positive, and only the cosine. A, all are positive. The sine, the cosine, and the tangent are positive. S, the sine is positive. And T, only the tangent is positive. So the cast rule tells us the cosine only is positive. All three ratios are positive. Only the sine value for these angles is positive. And only the tan value for these angles is positive. Isn't that great? Okay, we could keep going with filling in the unit circle. And in fact, I'll just fill in the exact values in a moment. I'd like you to think about it though. And here's what I'd like you to, to try to fill in first. The next set of angles is the 45 degree family. 45, and then what are the other values of the angles? Oops, over here, over here, over here. What are the values of each of those angles? And what are the coordinates? What are the x, y coordinates? I'm going to pause the video myself and fill that all in. So you should pause now. All right, so there, I've taken a moment to fill it in. The other angles just, just simply match the exact values we saw in the last lesson. For 135 degrees, I've got negative root 2 over 2, positive root 2 over 2. At 225 degrees, I've got negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. At 315 degrees, I've got positive root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. All right. For tomorrow, why don't you bring in a complete unit circle? Fill in the 60-degree family, those four other dots for the 60-degree family. And otherwise, please note that the unit circle has a radius of 1, so therefore passes through the points 1, 0, 0, 1, minus 1 comma 0 and 0 comma negative 1. As a final bonus on this lesson, let's consider a fi final family called the 90 degree family. 
This family contains all intercepts, also known as quadrential angles. This is the 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree, and 360 degree family. Those are the X and Y intercepts we just drew. Using the fact that we know that all X, Y values are the cosine and the sine for the unit circle, we could actually tell, tell ourselves now what is the sine, the cosine, and the tangent for each of these different angles. The sine of 270, that's negative 1, just consulting the unit circle. The cosine of 180, well, by consulting the unit circle, I'll find that that's negative 1. The tan of 90, how am I going to find that? Well, I could use a calculator, but in fact, the tangent of 90 is the opposite divided by the adjacent. If I drew an angle of 90 degrees, well, this doesn't exist. Okay, so that is a value that does not exist. What about the tan of 270? This also does not exist. Okay, these values do not exist. Uh, if you tried to draw a triangle with a, say, a, a tangent of 270, you're talking about this angle here. The reference angle is 90 degrees, and it's impossible to, in fact, draw a triangle. That triangle, in essence, and at any attempt to draw that triangle, would be too small a reference angle. Your opposite is, in fact, going to become infinitely large, and your adjacent is, in fact, infinitely small. So you would end up saying that the tangent of 270 does not exist. These concepts in B and D are rather obscure, but are worth thinking about. And please ask some questions about that if you're having trouble. For now, we're finally done section 2.1. We've made it through it through all of this standard position and reference angle and unit circle and exact values. And we finally have the basic vocabulary that we're going to use throughout trig for this year and the next. It's going to be important that you ask lots of questions at this point about what's giving you trouble in outcome T1, because this is going to be kind of the foundational material that we use. Okay, good luck.